When using trow and hold and hand tools, it's very important that you have two working ends to every tool. You have a steel end and you have a carbide end. On the steel end, you want to make sure that you keep it dressed so when you're striking it that you don't have to worry about splinters or slivers coming off it and that you maintain a good safe working surface. Failure to properly grind it will result in a tool looking like this where pieces come off, flakes come off, and uh, you're apt to get hurt or hurt somebody near you. To do this end, you always want to use a conventional steel wheel on your bench grinder. When you get to your carbide end to, to address that, there's several things you want to remember. You want to look at your working surface when you get it so that you maintain the same one. At every sharpening, slightly bevel each outside edge so that you don't have a, a place for it to dig in and snap the carbide. When you grind it, you have to make sure that you don't leave grind marks on the carbide because like glass, you can snap the carbide on the grind mark. You also don't quench it. You can refer to our uh, other tech tips on how to maintain carbide on individual tools. And we'll go into each one in detail. When you grind your carbide, you have to use either a silicon carbon carbide wheel or you have to use a diamond pad. Uh, heat doesn't bother them. Sudden quenching does. So that if you do get your uh, carbide hot with either method, just set it down and let it cool back down on its own. When you're using the carbide ends, you want to make sure that you breast your blade fully on the stone. The more irregular the stone surface, the more important it is to strike it softly uh, in, a, in a series in your lines so that when you hit it hard, that you've got as much carbide making contact with the stone as possible, distributing your force throughout the carbide so you get a better uh, break and less chance of damaging your carbide. If you feel the need to tip it up like this, then that's when you need to put it down and pick up a hand point. Failure to use this tool properly will result in this type of breakage. It'll either blow out the end, blow the carbide out. Here's a prime example of that's exactly what they did. They also let it get much too rounded so that it was taking much more force than it should have taken. <laughs>